Um, so um, this this amp, uh, and I know you won't memorize this, um, so it's good to take pictures. And I think that you can find these circuits for these online. They're just if you just do a search for audio amp 386, you'll find tons of circuits, and they're usually always the same. Uh, there's a couple of slight variations, but I'm going to build the simplest one for right now. Um, so it has just like any pen, any uh, chip. Um, you, it's got a power pin and a ground pin, um, and then some other stuff. Um, generally speaking, like if you see it uh, on a diagram, uh, like a circuit diagram, something that looks like this. That's that's sort of the symbol for an amplifier of sorts, um, and usually you've got like two like a inverting input and a non-inverting input and then an output. That's that's the, the typical kind of op amp sy symbol. So if you see this kind of a symbol in a circuit diagram, it's probably referring to a specific type of op amp. And like pins like like two, three, five or something like that. And then somewhere in the parts list you'll see something that'll say IC, you know, 386 or whatever. Um, and you might even see a couple of these. There are some chips that have more than one thing, and they're broken out, but they're actually the same chip, and they're just different pins or whatever. So if you ever see that symbol, that's that's what that's about. Go LDR chip 386. 386. 386. Yeah, LN 386. There are different companies that make them. So there's it's a LN 386 N4. So. Uh, okay, so uh, the first thing we need to do is provide power um, to the chip and, and ground. So um, I just grabbed, I'm going to use the same color wire for all of this, so um, that hopefully it doesn't bug anybody. Uh, so here's that's the power and that's the ground. Uh, okay, so I just happen to have this memorized, but again, you can look this up. The, the ground pin is here, uh, pin number four. And usually the way this work, the, the way numbering works on this is um, there's a little circle that indicates pin one usually. Uh, there's also a little divot that indicates the left side of the chip. So sometimes that might be missing or it might be a dot. But essentially what you do is you count from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's, that's almost universally true with chips. That's how you count the pins. So it's kind of this funny, like, counterclockwise motion from the lower left-hand uh, corner of the chip. Okay, now, um, the other thing I'm going to do, and I'll just tell you, there, the, the, this chip has um, an inverting input and a non-inverting input, and we're, not, we're basically just going to um, uh, take that and ground it. So I'm going to actually pin number three, I'm also going to short that to ground as well. Um, so there's my ground and then the pin next to it, which is just the non-inverting input on the op amp thing, is, is just shorted to ground. Uh, okay, and then power, the power pin on this chip is pin number six, which is this one right here, right there. So the second from the right on the top. So that's going to go from here to power. Uh, and the chip is now powered and it's doing its thing, except there's no input or output yet. Um, the only other component that you need on, on an amplifier like this is just a big fat capacitor. Uh, the bigger, um, the louder it will be, but not necessarily the way you might think. Um, it might just be slightly louder with a bigger, um, and we're talking, we're talking about basically a hundred microphones higher. Um, incidentally, um, I should talk to you at some point about how to read capacitors because they're really confusing. Um, and I'll just go over that now real quick. Um, you don't have to write this down because you can find all this stuff online. But you, generally speaking, this electrolytic type, these, these uh, cylinder types, um, they usually just say on them uh, 100 microfarads, uh, micro F. Um, generally, um, uh, capacitors are, um, the value is either in microfarads, well, there are farads, but those are big fat giant capacitors, but microfarads um, and uh, picofarads. Um, if you use a DVM to measure them, it may measure them in nanofarads. So if you just, if you know your, your uh, um, 
your measurement units, you know, you've got micro, then you've got nano, and then you've got pico, right? So we're talking six zeros away, um, essentially. So this is a, a microfarad based, so it says right on 100 microfarads. Just so you know, if you get a, one of these kind of capacitors, these ceramic disc capacitors, see how this says 221 on it? It's a three digit number. This is in picofarads. The one is the number of zeros. So the, the, the third digit is the number of zeros. So this is a 220 picofarad capacitor. If you see capacitors that have only two numbers on it, like this one, uh, this is 10 picofarads. Um, if you see capacitors with only one number on them, like this one, this is a one picofarad. Now, by these really tiny ones, because a lot of DV some DVMs, cheaper DVMs, can't measure that low. So um, that's why it's important to kind of understand the nomenclature. So um, again, this stuff is all online, and, and there are there are exceptions to all these things as well. So it can get really confusing. Um, in general, like you know these. If you see one that says 103, that's one that's used a lot. That's a that's basically 0 0.01 microfarads or 10,000 picofarads, uh, and you use these a lot in in electronics in um, these and 104s, which are 0 0.1 microfarads. So anyway, that's that's how that works. Okay, so I'm gonna for for this one component that we need for the output, um, we basically need about 100 microfarads or higher. So here's a 100 micro, microfarad capacitor. Again, these are polarized types, so um, it's a good idea to put them in the right way. This probably wouldn't explode with uh, the voltage, that, but so um, I plug the longer tail uh, into the into pin number uh, five. That's the output, and the shorter tail is just going to go the the ground is just going to go there, and my speaker is going one one side is going to just go in the ground it doesn't really matter well in in you know in applications where you really care of course it matters i mean because it you know it, it determines whether the speaker is moving this way or whether it whether positive is moving out or negative is moving out but for these kinds of like little toy kind of things that we're doing it doesn't really matter that much so i'm plugging the so i'm not paying attention to which or which side of the speaker run. I'm going to plug the other one into the same rail that the um, output of the capacitor is going into. So everyone see that? We're almost done. So the only other thing we need to do now is get an input. The input is on pin number two. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this, um, strip it, um, and stick that into pin two. and. I've got an amplifier, and so presumably if I hook this up to something, uh, we would get uh, some kind of sound. Does anybody have, um, you know, I'm just now I'm thinking that we, we do need to amplify something at some point, something that would be easy to grab with outputs. Anybody have any ideas? Um, actually, no. Just like a headphone jack of some sort? No, just a source, like something that we can actually listen to. Uh, maybe. I have my iPhone. Yeah, do, you, does any, do we have any old... Um, Jacks that we can cut off and this one's yeah. kind of, no, but that's not the right one. We like a mini. Uh, I was gonna say I have a quarter inch jack attached to nothing right now. Uh, no, that won't help us with that. Well, I think oh, the, the, where's the bag? I was what I, I think it's right here. I know I'm pretty sure there might be one in there. That oh no, I think it's wrong. I think I don't think there are any minis in there. I think I went looking for one. Yeah. Okay, well, why don't we just build a muscle here then? Because um, we're going to do that anyway, right? So, um, we'll just build a real simple square wave oscillator on the same board, and that'll be our that'll be our output. Um, so, I'm using this this 74 C14 chip um, to do this, and this is like what we did at the beginning of the semester. So just to review, um, again, it's just a chip. It needs power. It needs ground. Um, and then we're going to set up an RC network to create an oscillation. So um, let's see. On this chip, um, uh, the pin number 7 right here is the ground. Oops. Pin number 7. And pin number uh, 14, which is here, is our power pin. Okay, so that is now power.